I have a mechanical music box here, a microphone attached to my watch strap. Have a listen to this. And I'm going to put it on a piece of solid pine. On a guitar. A glass bowl. And on a hollow plywood box. And lastly on a loudspeaker cabinet. In a moment, I'll explain what this simple demonstration is for, but allow me to try and get you on board for a rather interesting journey. You might need to suspend your judgment and free your mind to escape the many preconceptions in our hi-fi world. Have you or would you ever consider refusing to go see your favorite band or artist because of the brand of music instrument they've chosen to use on the night? Are you aware that a lot of the music you listen to has probably been mastered on loudspeakers and other equipment that you've probably never heard of, some of it 20 to 30 years old? You see, I think that the hi-fi frame has become a lot more important than the music picture it holds. A loudspeaker, an amplifier, a turntable is a recipe of design and ingredients, the type of ingredients, the quantity, the proportions, how it's all mixed together and presented, create the unique hi-fi flavor. I want to confidently say that there is credible and wonderful stuff happening in the smaller hi-fi kitchens of the world. May I introduce Sono Audio? I'm Roy. I've been making loudspeakers for just over three and a half decades. I invite you to see what we're cooking up in our hi-fi kitchen in Johannesburg, South Africa. Back to the demonstration. We know how these music boxes work. The spike drum turns and triggers the spring plate. The springs vibrate, pressurizing the air, creating a sound wave. A lot of that energy is transferred down the spring plate into the chassis of the music box, but due to its small size, it doesn't contribute much to the sound. However, touch it to a surface and the chassis becomes a conduit for that energy. The surface is energized and vibrates, creating sound waves. So, what's this got to do with loudspeakers? Mechanical music box, electromechanical loudspeaker drivers. Both have to vibrate to create sound, and both will transfer vibrations to other surfaces. Music box, well, not such a problem. It's small. Loudspeaker cabinet quite the opposite. Imagine that these are musical instruments, perhaps the keyboard of a piano. A loudspeaker needs to reproduce that complex music signal, the harmonics, the resonance, the transient strikes, sustained decay, without influencing the original recorded sound by contributions from its own chassis. And this is the big deal and the reason for the simple demonstration. You see, as the loudspeaker is playing those music notes, pressurizing the air, creating the sound wave, it's simultaneously energizing its own chassis. So how does the loudspeaker stay true to the recorded music whilst at the same time exciting its own chassis? It's a really complex issue to address. Perhaps you become more familiar with the frame than the music picture it holds, but once you understand just how important a loudspeaker cabinet is, I'm sure you'll agree that this is a good starting point in a series of videos as I show you how I go about making our loudspeakers. 
I want to show you how I make my cabinets to be as sonically neutral as possible. I hope you'll join me on a journey through our works. I trust you'll see that there is structural integrity and value beyond expectation in the work that we do. So we start our journey in the factory watching a cabinet in the first stage of assembly. Now every component of all our speaker cabinets from the smallest to the largest, are made from 22 millimeter thick medium density fiberboard. I really favor this composite board. The density and the thickness of the board varies so that a portion of the edges or faces are denser than the inner core. This kind of unintentional sandwich means that the board has a wider spectrum band of resonance of a lower peak rather than a narrower spectrum band with a higher resonance peak. The board we use is thick and short, it's not uncommon in higher end speakers. And now there's this type of tongue and groove assembly. But let's take this to the next level. So I learned that the strength of a joint is in the precision of fit, not the amount of glue used. Have a look at this dry fit. This is the tolerance I work to. I fit the partition without any glue and the fit is precise without any play so that when I raise the one piece, there is enough friction in the joint to lift the other piece. This is a really tight tolerance, especially when glue is applied because the glue swells and adheres the joint. The edge joints are not mitre or lock mitre joints. It's of my design to increase the surface area of the joints. So to have a homogeneous continuation of the composite board where edges meet. And I do this to get the strength and rigidity I need throughout the whole cabinet. Let's have a peek inside our Clara 6.2. This is the smaller of the two speakers you saw in my intro. And this is where it really goes to another level. See, I have bracing in all three planes, top to bottom, side to side, and front to back. Bracing is common, sure, but in all three planes, I think this is rare. Well, very rare in the price ranges we sell for, and this is standard in the range. Now again, to another level. You see that the pockets cut into the bracing are not just rectangular or circular as is so often seen. Each brace has a uniquely profiled pocket to once again tune the cabinet. Resonance is measured and the brace position, orientation and profile are optimized to create a monocoque type structure so that its sonic signature is really minimized. And at the same time, it's a rigid, strong foundation for the drivers to reproduce an accurate recording. If you've persevered this far, well, thank you. A very serious media company based in Munich with full laboratory test facilities, structurally isolated, well-proportioned review rooms, reviewed our Clara 8.2 loudspeaker. To quote from the well-known audio magazine, ironically, the less audiophile of the recordings, which was Bridge Over Troubled Waters by singer-songwriter legend Simon and Garfunkel cast a spell over us. It was as if the loudspeaker was remastering the recording again. The recording was finally revealed and the voices were positioned perfectly in the room. We've heard the song for what feels like a thousand times, but to be honest, we've never perceived the beauty and magic of the song so clearly. Andreas, the editor-in-chief that did this review, so eloquently described what I might have failed to do, certainly so eloquently and succinctly. You see, obviously, the loudspeaker isn't remastering the music. It's what it's not doing. It's what it's not contributing of its own signature that allows the music to be presented as it was recorded. Well, there's some interesting things we do to the outside of the cabinet to again take it to another level. And this will be the subject of the video to follow. I might stand on my soapbox for a minute or two, but I'll keep it really short. I hope you'll find it interesting. Thank you.